In this video, Miss Mary is going to show you how to make a Kentucky apple stack cake for your holiday festivities. We're going to start out with our dry ingredients with four cups of all-purpose flour in the bag there. And we're going to see if we can get Mary going here and we'll do half a teaspoon of baking soda. And we'll follow that by one teaspoon of salt. Just pour it right in there and two teaspoons of baking powder. And we're going to shake, shake, shake before we bake. We're going to get it all mixed up there by whatever means you want to make it mix it up. Next, we're going to start our wet ingredients. And we'll start with two cups or two sticks. Well, that's two cups, I guess, of softened butter. And we're going to combine it with one cup of packed brown sugar. Now that's what I call packed. Okay. And follow that by one cup of molasses. Can't have a southern cake without molasses. They don't use molasses in the north because it pours, it pours too slowly. There you go. Get it all out of there, all that gooey goodness. And follow that with one cup of half and half. Very good. Two teaspoons of vanilla. Don't use that phony stuff, use real vanilla. Oop, nothing like a little extra vanilla. Very cool. And then four eggs without the shells, please. There we go. No shells in that. And then two nice rounded teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. Or you could use ginger, but I like pumpkin pie spice. They're all about the same. They all include about the similar, very similar ingredients. And you're going to mix all that stuff up. Mix it up really well. And then combine it with your dry ingredients. We're going to do this gradually here. Probably the best way to have done it would have been actually to have put the dry ingredients into the wet instead of the wet into the dry. But oh well, that's the way we did it here. But what really matters is they eventually get together. Now while Mary is mixing the ingredients here, it's probably important to note that if this mixture ends up a little on the thick side, you can always add a little bit of half and half milk to it to thin it out because you want it to be fairly malleable in the baking pans. And there she is mixing it up. We were a little on the thick side here. Okay, now we're gonna prepare the apple spice, the spiced apples rather. And we're going to cheat a little bit because we're going to strain the applesauce, take some of the moisture out of it so we don't have to cook it forever and ever and ever. And once you get that to the proper thickness, which is gonna be about what you'll get with apple butter, you want to add a cup of sugar to it. And my favorite spice is allspice, a couple teaspoons of allspice, and heat that up, make it nice and warm, and get those flavors in together. And then here's what I was talking about, getting the ingredients thin enough, the baking baked ingredients. That's a little on the thick side. You really want, you know, thinner, um, sort of pancake thicknesses when you finish up. These ended up a little thinner. They're a little thicker. Want to thin them out. So uh, we could have thinned this, uh, in this uh, mixture out with a little bit of milk so it would flatten out a little better in the pan. And that would give you a shorter, better cooking time. But, you know, even if it doesn't turn out perfect, this recipe is so good that it's going to taste fantastic anyway. 
This particular mixture, we should probably have cooked it about 14 minutes, but we did 10. So we're a little short on the cooking time, but it still turned out well and tasted great. Well, after they're baked, you want to cool them on parchment paper. And once everything is cooled, the apple spice and the discs, you layer them together like this. Try to keep them flat as they go up. And that's what you got. Now it's best to let this sit overnight in a refri refrigerator, two nights if possible. And that's just perfect for Thanksgiving Day.